general practice, we are seeing an increase in people with eating disorders. The average age of presentation of an eating disorder is around 16, 17 years. And the majority of people with eating disorders are young girls or women. People with eating disorders often find it difficult to speak up and ask for help. The first step in getting better is recognising there is a problem and talking openly about it to get the help that you need. How are things going? Yeah, it's actually interesting because that's what I... So why I started that banner that I was telling you about oh. was um, wanting to... Because I think the whole food thing is a lot mixed up with emotions and stuff and it's not just the food issue, it's a lot more than that. Yeah. So it's been really helpful just been getting um, counselling and and actually been addressing like other like roots of why my eating might have been bad. OK, that sounds really... So that's helped. Helpful, yeah. And, yeah, and that's really the banner that yeah. you've got. Do yeah. you want to show me Do you want to show me? Yeah, absolutely. Because I broke my foot um, three days after I started it. Jessica has made fantastic progress and is doing currently very well. She broke her foot several months ago and she found that when she was wearing crutches and she was forced to have a period of rest in hospital, that she was able to openly accept the help from those around her. And it made her draw comparisons with her emotional well-being and with her, her anorexia. Okay. And I called it the beauty from Asha's journey because um, I guess like my whole eating thing started because I was really afraid of not being perfect and wanted to like address why I didn't feel like good enough or perfect as I was. So I started the banner as a friend gave me the phrase, when I'm me, I have liberty. That's a very good phrase. Which is yeah. a really good phrase. Yeah. <laughs> the beautiful poster that she showed us in the consultation was her way of illustrating the, the healing process that she went through. I was very touched that she wanted to share that with me. And I think it's an excellent way that she has found for herself to, to help describe what she has, has been feeling. I've been seeing Dr. Hassas um, at least since my youngest was born, who's nine years old. He just appealed to me because he's kind. He's a good listener, and that's just what you want out of a GP. You need someone to listen to you. How are you getting on? Um, I did... I had came to a bit of a... You know I haven't been bathing and uh, it's become a bit of a, an, an issue for me, and that's why I got this infection on my scalp, if you remember. OK. The name for my personality disorder is Emotionally Unstable Personality Disorder, and there are many different types of personality disorder. The, the best way I can describe it is that if you imagine a ruler and, and on, on the 50 centimetre mark of the 100 centimetre ruler, um, it's like an, yeah, an axis. People who are normal sort of go along the middle and have blips like that. And people who have personality disorder kind of go straight up to the top, straight down to the bottom, straight up to the top, straight down to the bottom. So in the whole day, you can just go so many emotions. Um, and it came to a bit of a head this week because I looked down and I was covered in fleas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, that that feeling of the feeling of disgust mm. was just awful. I couldn't sleep because I was scratching. I was paranoid about the fleas, and um, I got up and I had a bath just to drown out, to drown okay. the fleas. Have the dogs had fleas? Well, I've, I have got, I've got treatment for them, I just forget to put it on. It's difficult to say things like that. When I know I'm going to be on the bus and people are going to look at me and say, um, she doesn't have a shower every day, she, uh, she, she must smell, she must be dirty. Um, I don't care. I don't care because I want people to know. Uh, that's what it's like for me. That's what it's like for me, having a personality disorder. Oh, and I, I still have this idea of suicide. And what are, how are your thoughts about suicide? 
I've got, I've got a plan. What's your plan? Um... Well, I've, I've got some... Uh, the Razpan that they gave me when I left hospital, it's not enough to OD on. And I figured if I took more than I should, and then I, then I have the courage to walk in, to walk in front of a bus, or, or walk into some traffic. For me, my relationship with my GP has been extremely important. They're the front line, if you like. I, I would also see a psychiatrist, but I see my psychiatrist every four months. Um, if I'm having a trauma, my GP is, is who I go to. So what, what needs to be done to keep you safe, Janet? What, what do we need to do? Because I think in the past it's been impulsive, hasn't it? The, the overdoses. Not completely. You've been thinking about it for a while, but some things have made you do it. I'm not handing them over. Mm. That, that idea is the only thing I have to cling on to. The idea that you have something. OK, all right. OK. And what's helping? Are you managing to control those urges at the moment? Only. Only just. Yes. What's helping with that? Um, I find when the when I'm with the dog outside, for instance, mm -hmm. um, I have fewer suicidal thoughts because I I guess because I'm being with the dog makes me more pr present. Mm -hmm. It's when um, when I don't have the dog, they get really they get really intense. So if I'm on a bus and I see a bus coming, I see me walking in front of the bus or. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just a continual, a continual on and off fantasy. Mm. I've got two pets. I've got a dog um, and a cat. Those animals um, are purely and utterly in the present. So if you take the dog out, then you can only be in the present. You can't be depressed because depression is about being in the past. You can't be anxious because anxiety is about thinking about things in the future. You can only be in the present because you're, because that animal is only in the present. When is your biggest risk time? Is it the mornings or is it evenings or is there a particular time of the day? Probably evening. In the evening. Okay. And do you take the dog out in the evening? Um, sometimes. Sometimes. So for this week, could you kind of think about taking the dog out in the evening? Can we just try it <coughs> just over the weekend? Yeah. You have to go with the things which make you feel good, like taking the dog for a walk. And for me, one of those things is, um, is my children, my two boys. I haven't been seeing them on a regular basis, and that's, that's because I don't want to expose them to my mental illness. But when I do see them, it's like there's an aura of, of joy around them. They, they, they're amazing despite the fact that um, my ex and I have gone through, through divorce. They're, despite the fact that they know I, um, they get, I get sad, which is what we call it, and, and then sometimes I have to go to hospital. And when, we, when can we touch base? Um, can I get in and see whether we get? Any time next week is good. Next week, so Thursday? Uh, yes. I'm going to book that in. Thank you. Is that all right? So obviously, as before, if things are getting worse between now and then, just call. OK. And you'll be feeling you can't control the urges. That, I think that's what I'm... I think we need to be, just be aware of. I want to see my sons grow up. I really do. I think they're going to be amazing people. Um, I, want to, I want to go back to work eventually, um, even though I've not worked since the uh, youngest was born, so I haven't worked for nine years. I, that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to feel that I can be responsible. It's something which makes me feel a tiny bit more positive about the future. OK. So that's the tablets. And then the appointment's booked for next Thursday. Call soon if you need to. All right. Good to see you. All right. Bye-bye now.